Oh, hi again guys, back for the next video. Um, this one's also by request from a gentleman. He just wanted to know what my favourite weather is or what sort of weather I like to fish and what works. Uh, for me anyway, uh, weather, moon, tides. So what I was just going to do is, because that could be a rather big one if I really delved into it really deeply. So I'm just going to do is give you a basic breakdown on the weather, moon and tides that I like to fish. Okay, and for that, I've got my trusty old whiteboard here, so we'll turn the camera around and uh, just show you guys um, what I like to fish anyway. Just because I'm going to say this works for me some of the time, not all the time, but this this works for me, what I'm about to show you, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Everyone likes got their own favourite weather, tides, moons, everything else. This is just a break, break, breakdown of what I like to fish, okay? Um, and if you guys have got another way of fishing or like other tides or something for these species, um, just let me know in the comments. That'd be great, thanks. I'll turn the camera around. Um, hopefully you can see that. Oh, sorry about your finger. That's not too bad there, is it? Maybe a little bit higher. That seems to be pretty good there. All right, guys, so we'll start off quick and easy. Uh, we'll just go the weather. Since it's winter, uh, we'll start off over here with this one. So winter for me, you get mostly westerly winds, and I love westerly winds. Winter time for me is great fishing. So westerly winds is great. Um, fantastic for beach fishing. The, uh, the tailor fishermen go nuts. The tailor come in, it's nice and calm. Plenty of tailor, and if you like along South Stratty or down south or um, off the beaches, you can find some good jewfish too. You fish in the gutters with the with the Wesleys. And it's also great for offshore reefs. Like if you've got a howling Wesley, doesn't mean you can't fish, it just means you've got to stick to close to inshore. So if you've got some wrecks in close or the bait grounds, you can go out and get some nice tail on the re uh, reefs. You can go catch cobia, you can go catch jewfish, even in a howling Wesley, if you stick to the close like bait reefs or wrecks. So it works well. And if you've got a really light Wesley, like a nice light Wesley, you can go anywhere and then Fish bite in Wesley, so fishing out wide, in close, anywhere, it's just good all round fishing. And generally in winter, on Wesley winds, the water's fairly clean. Um, so it's good, I like Wesleys. I've got here too, so I like Wesley, great for offshore fishing, 18s, 24s, 50s, even out wide for deep dropping and trawling for this time of year. Guys going out trawling for blues, and uh, you still get dolphin fishing, wah um, wahoo and stuff out over the shelf at times, over winter, in the warmer currents. Okay, so winter time, I like Wesley's. Uh, summertime. Summer, you get a lot of northerlies. Well, oh, I've got there a naughty word. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so northerlies, not so good. Northerlies here in the Gold Coast or southeast Queensland, it, what that does is what we call roll the water over. So, like we're sitting in the big bay here off the Gold Coast, it's like a, it really is a big bay. And northerly wind seems to turn the water over and it turns it to green and cold. So in, inshore fishing or close reefs, not so good for pelagics over summer. Like the mackerel don't mind it as long as it doesn't get too cold. They don't mind the green water. Uh, little blacks don't mind the green water as long as it doesn't get too cold. Okay. So if you're chasing dolphin fish and like wahoo and stuff, which a lot of guys are over summer, you need to head out to at least the 36s or the 50s to find blue water when we've got northerlies. Because out there you've got the nice clean water, southerly current, in close it tends to roll over, go green. But in saying that too, here's one thing a lot of guys I know don't do, they're all set in pelagic mode. But over summer, you get northerly winds, if the water's cool, it's green, go to the close reefs, chase snapper and jewfish. They are still there in that water. Okay? So snapper and jewfish are still in the, on the close reefs when it's an oily wind, when it's nice and green. You will get a few little blacks and mackerel in it as long as it's not too cold. Okay? Um, over summer, occasionally we get a good southerly bustle, like that's a, like a howling southerly, a 30 plus night southerly wind. That will roll the water over here again, but it'll roll the other way, it'll turn it nice and blue and warm, right in close. And when that happens, the fishing's awesome. Uh, the mackerel really fire up. You will get wahoo, dolphin fish, everything right into near, near the back of the surf. They will come in really close if we get a big southerly buster and rolls the water over and turns it nice and blue. 
and fishing just goes off. Don't get a lot of them, and usually they do howl for a few days, but when they do, when that suddenly, good suddenly buster goes through, go fishing, the fishing's awesome. Okay. And also over summer, occasionally get light southerlies. So what I mean by southerlies, like south, southwest, southeast, just southerlies. Yeah, that's just good fishing everywhere. If you get a nice light southerly, the water's usually pretty pretty clean and warm. Uh, go out and chase whatever. Fish of you chewing. That's just a good all-round wind, but you don't get a lot of them over summer. Unfortunately, it's mainly northerlies, which drives, drives us nuts, but that's just the way it is. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, tides. Tides for me do play a part in fishing, quite a big one, even offshore. Offshore, generally, if I can, a high or a low water, just a tide change does work. And I'm not just talking about one or two different sorts of fish. It generally works for everything. Like from bottom bashing, you'll catch pearlies over a tide change, to trolling, you'll catch marlin and stuff over tide changes. Uh, wahoo, uh, float lining, snapper, live baiting, jewies and stuff. Tide changes always does work well. Tide changes something. If you can work a tide change into your fishing trip, that's great. Okay, that's very good. Offshore, even inshore, offshore, doesn't matter. Tide changes are good. Okay, and what I've got here, just by memory, some, sometimes I've got a couple of fish here that I catch on a certain tide. Like I've got cobia on the close reefs, like in the bait reefs or some of the wrecks, even no mile. I tend to find cobia on the last of the run out tide. They send the end off the pin, they seem to bite in the last of the run out. I catch more cobia on the last of the run out tide. Um, wahoo is very similar. When I'm chasing wahoo at nine mile, I try to go when it's the last of the run out tide out of tweed. Because usually you'll get a few more wahoo on the last of the run out tide. I'm not sure why, but it does seem to work that way. And what I've got here, oh, like Mulloway. Yeah, Mulloway close reefs, tide changes obviously. So high and low water, tide changes, works well. A couple of hours either side. When I'm talking tide changes, I'm talking a couple of hours either side. So like four to five hours fishing, but either side of the tide change. And as we're going down the board here, um, I'm always fishing either early mornings, late afternoons, into the evenings. I very rarely fish throughout the whole day, unless it's summer and I'm trawling out wide for like marlin or pelagics. When you troll, you can troll all day. Even live baiting like spot eggs or something out wide, you can do it all day. And generally, like spot eggs and stuff, tide changes works well. Okay, but when you're chasing snapper and jewel and reef fish and stuff, early mornings, late afternoons. Okay. Um, the next one, moons. Okay. I went fishing last night and we just got nailed by like little tailor. I mean, like undersized tailor. They were in plague proportions everywhere we went offshore last night. That's why there's no video. They were driving us absolutely nuts. Pinching all our baits. Uh, pinching the live baits, we even put Taylor down as live baits, and once the Taylor live bait Taylor died, the other Taylor friggin' ate them. That's the first time that's happened. But I didn't, I didn't know. A friend told me last night. Last night was a full moon. I really don't like fishing full moons. I never do any good. They're always bad for me. Um, so that sort of might explain last night. But Taylor and play big portions in the close reefs. But full moons, I generally don't fish. The only reason I went last night, or Two reasons, I didn't know it was full moon. If, even if I did, I still would have went because the weather's good and I had a bit of free time. If you've got free time and the weather's good, guys, go fishing. Just go. doesn't matter what the tides and stuff are. Go and enjoy yourself. We enjoyed ourselves, just it didn't catch any fish, unfortunately. Not, no footage worth posting. Uh, so full moons, I don't particularly like, like them. If I can work around them, I will. I like a new moon rising. Okay, always the best for pretty much all species. And at least three nights after a full is good, as a moon's falling, about three nights after, and falling is quite good. I know there's an old wives' tale, full moon for jewies, and a lot of you guys know many jewies and stuff I've caught over years. I don't fish it, I can't stand a full moon for any for anything. Even last night, like I said, we caught bugger all, and I didn't know that it was a full moon. <laughs> um, okay, what have I got here? So I've got here, yeah, once again, these tide winds and moon phases work well. This is for me. This is what I generally like and fish, and it works for me. It might be a little bit different pattern for you and what you like. And once again, if it's something a bit different, let me know in the comments what species and what tides you like to catch. 
Okay, and down here, well, once again, if the weather's good, go. If the weather's good, guys, go for a fish. If you wait for the right tides, the right moon, the right everything, you're never going to get out between work and the weather. You're never going to get out. So if the weather's just basically, if the weather's good, if you've got free time, go for a fish, enjoy. If you don't catch any fish, look, go home, look what the tides were, look what the winds were, look what the moon was doing, put it together, and learn something. You learn something every trip. Okay, and I was gonna say if you like this one, guys, you, you didn't mind this video because this is all for offshore too, by the way. So I've got off, offshore up top. This is what I fish for offshore. I tried tried to run offshore, but if the weather's good, I'll go anyway. But these are what I like offshore. If you like this video, let me know, and we'll do a part two, and I'll do what tides and you know whether I like for inshore fishing. We'll just see how this one goes first. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, once again, starting August, August 1st, I've got a series coming out. I'll turn the video around to face me, sorry guys. Starting August 1st, I've got a series coming out. I'm doing 20 videos in 20 days, and they're all gonna be how-to videos. So just keep an eye out for that one. I won't tell you what the how-tos are, but they're just fishing, like making things, making rigs, knots, just, and fixing things, just how-to videos. So it'll be 20 videos in 20 days, uh, starting August 1st. Keep an eye out for that. And, well, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.